Because the difference is in the way the water runs in dry creeks versus the way it runs in wet creeks, it's actually not uncommon to see black sand laying on top of the ground, like you can see right here. This is right on top of the ground, only about a half inch or less deep. See, I can dig right through it right there. But there's still a nice ribbon of black sand quite visible as you walk through here. And wherever black sand goes, gold could go as well. Now, the reason this is here is because, as I said, it works differently than wet rivers. In wet rivers, you have water flowing over these rocks all the time, or almost all the time. And so it's going to sort the heavies, and they're going to drop to the bottom. It's just constantly vibrating and rolling over the rocks and moving it down. Well, here, gold and water in general moves in floods. So you'll have a flood come through here, wash everything, drop it, dry up in two days, and leave it. So there's not enough consistent action to move it all the same place. So what happens is you'll have a big flood come through and sort all the rocks about a foot down. And then you'll have a much smaller flood come by a few years later and only sort the top inch or so. And then an even smaller flood will come through and just move a little bit of dirt on top or just part of the channel. It won't even fill the whole river. So what happened here is that an older flood came through and dropped the black sand on the bottom of that layer, as it always does, because it's heavy, and the gold with it. And then a lighter flood came through and just washed off the lighter stuff off the top, and they moved them over here or over there, and just left the black stuff, because it wasn't enough to move all this out of the way. So what that means is that if that flood moved gold, then these black sand ripples here will be a very quick way of picking it up. All you have to do is take a scoop, and maybe a broom, and just sweep that top layer until you start to see black sand disappear. This is already quite heavy, I can feel. Compared to regular dirt, this is very heavy. So, just do a couple of panfuls of this and see if this flood layer brought any gold with it. Not all of them do. If, just because it moved black sand doesn't mean it moved gold. Or it may not have cut through a bank where there was much gold in it, so it just moved everything else. In order for this to work, the river has to have cut through a place, it had a gold deposit, it had a bunch of gold someplace, and moved it downstream. If that flood didn't do that, it won't have moved any gold and there's not going to be anything in that layer, or at least not very much. So you've got to find the bottom of the flood layer that moved the last real gold. We'll talk about that in the next segment. First, I'm going to pan this out and see what we found in it. You, we panned out that pan, there was basically nothing in it. Just kind of what I expected, because I didn't see much else in that layer when I did it elsewhere in here, because I've already done quite a bit of sampling. Now, this top layer is where that black sand was. And if you look closely here, you probably can't see it on camera, but there's a pretty good layer of black sand here, down around here, up along here. Some of it's about two inches thick even. And it's a lot thicker than it was up there. And I, and I panned this, and I found a fair amount here, which is why I dug this hole in this spot. But um, you're getting down lower, you see the black sand stops around here. And then down here, there's another layer of black sand. Down here, you see a bunch of big rocks. And then all of a sudden, the rocks stop completely down here. So up here near the top, there's black sand. And this is the same layer I walked upstream. It didn't find much up there. Down here, you see a layer of sorted gravels. Then you see some larger rocks starting to show up along in here. And then all of a sudden, down here, the rock disappear. And down here, we have a very neat, sorted, small gravel and very few rocks. So from this gravel layer down here, there's basically very little all the way down until you get to the very bottom. You start seeing a little bit more rock again. But down here, we have hard pan. And this is not bedrock, but it's the next best thing. This is called caliche. Caliche is a broad term, which technically means a type of clay, but in popular usage it has a wide variety of meanings all across the country. But basically what it means in the gold sense is that when you get down to the bottom of these creeks, you reach a layer of some kind of a substance that's clay and rock and concrete kind of a feeling, one or the other, and you get down there and that's your effective bedrock. Even though true bedrock, which is defined as the rock that the earth is made out of, like the mantle kind of rock, like made out of granite or whatever, you get down to the true bedrock, you'll know it. You'll hit a hammer on it and it rings and makes noises. When you hit this stuff, usually it just kind of absorbs the impact. And that's one test. But it doesn't really matter for our purposes because all we're looking for is something that will stop gold going down. And when gold hits this, it stops going down. So unless it moved before the caliche got deposited, which is possible, this top of this caliche is as good as bedrock for our purposes. So when you get down here, we're going to obsessively clean that caliche just as good as we would when we walk the wet rivers and obsessively clean the crevices there. We're going to clean them just like that. Sweep it, wire brush it, put it, vacuum it, whatever we need to do to get that clean. Now, I've already done that here, and I have found very little on the caliche. So I'm going to assume that that original layer didn't really produce a whole lot of gold here, but that it was deposited by a later flood. Now, there are several reasons why that might have happened. For one, 
Maybe the original course of the river didn't run through a gold-bearing area. Maybe it didn't undercut a gold mountain or something like that and didn't have the gold dropping into the stream. Maybe it was fine up until around here, which is when men up hill stream started doing heavy-scale mining and dropping their mining tailings into the river, at which point gold started to flow into the stream. Or maybe they changed the course of the river. I don't know the history, and it's very difficult to tell at this point. What I do know is that when I get down to this contact layer right here, between this layer and this layer, I find a, my best gold right along this layer. And that happens in a lot of rivers, even in the wet rivers, but the difference there is you usually don't notice it because you can't get down into the water and see it unless you're dredging. So if you do dredge, you'll notice similar contact layers like this and start to understand a little bit more about the gold when you get to that point. But for right now, what this means for us is I walked down here and found very little. I walked up here and found quite a bit. So I'm not going to dig down to the bottom. I'm just going to dig down to the bottom of this contact layer and I'll just widen this around and get rid of the top stuff that doesn't pay me anything, not go down to the bottom, and just walk this six inches or eight inches or so of dirt that actually is giving me gold and get rid of the rest. Now that saves me a lot of time, a lot of water, a lot of everything, and gives me the most value for my money. So this is caliche. This is a clay-like substance. It's got a lot of little rocks in it. And when you get down to this, this is your effective bedrock. Now somebody has already cleaned this thoroughly, and I came by and did some extra cleaning myself down in these cracks. And I didn't find much, but that doesn't mean it won't work for you. I'm just showing you the principles here. This particular place doesn't show us much. But um, under the caliche, there's hard rock. And over here, you can see the caliche is broken up. And this is actually solid rock. This is just a light, soft, reverberating sound. This is a, a hard rock sound. So under here, I did some more searching and didn't really find much either there. This area has been worked quite a bit. And so most of the claims that you go to that are old claims are going to have been worked quite a lot in this desert area at least. And that's probably going to face everywhere you go is people have been there before you. That doesn't mean they got everything, but it's going to make it a little harder to find it. You've got to be a bit more creative to find it. And the same rules that would have applied had you been the first people here may not apply now. So when I came here, my first thought was to dig down there, get to bedrock in some place that this guy hadn't dug, and see what I found. I did it, didn't find anything, so I move on. That's what this stamping tour today has been about. It's just going to different places, identifying spots, and moving on to the next one. Now, I picked out a couple of spots that I'm going to work a little bit more thoroughly, and you'll see those on the next video. And I think you'll find that there are a lot of better ways to work than what most people do out here in the desert.